Hey guys, we are back. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch and its graphical capabilities, what we do know, and what is rumored about the system as well. Now, keep in mind that a lot of this stuff is still based on rumor, but from what we have heard, some of this is probably going to be coming true, and we can speculate on other possibilities as well. So basically there's been an article posted that has been getting a lot of traction over the last couple days from VentureBeat talking about the Nintendo Switch using a Maxwell GPU for its processing, which is basically the Tegra X1. And it's exactly what Eurogamer had said that the Switch was using in its dev kits since back in July. So if that does turn out to be true, that is not going to be a surprise. But there's a couple things about that information from that article that is interesting because this system is being designed by NVIDIA and they had said on their website that they designed the Nintendo Switch GPU as custom built on their current technology from Tegra. So if Nintendo is using a Maxwell Tegra X1 in the Nintendo Switch hardware, it is going to be most likely a shrunken down version to 16 nanometers and not 20 nanometers due to the size of the system and for the battery life of it they need to have a smaller form factor in order to increase performance and have better battery life. And the confusion is that Maxwell is for some reason a lot worse than the new Pascal, which it is not. Pascal is actually based on Maxwell. It's basically the same architecture, just a little bit improved for Pascal. So if Maxwell is a shrunken down version of the original Tegra X1, the performance is likely going to be pretty much the same as the newer Pascal because they can overclock it farther with the smaller form factor of 16 nanometers. And it will help the battery life of the system last longer, if this is all true, of course. Now, either way, this system is not going to be as powerful as PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. This is a given. Anyone who's expecting that handheld portion of the Nintendo Switch to be just as powerful as PS4 is going to be extremely disappointed in the Nintendo Switch. This system is basically not designed to be that powerful. It simply does not have the chips powerful enough to be that type of system. But it is compatible with all or most of the current engines that are on the market. Unreal Engine 4, Unity for example, and the APIs more importantly can be run on the Nintendo Switch like DirectX 12 and Vulkan, which of course like we've talked about before, DirectX 12 will not be run on this system because Nintendo would have to pay for it to license it. But Vulkan, yes, and a variation of DirectX 12, they would have to compile something similar on OpenGL, basically. We have heard that the dock does not add extra power currently to the Nintendo Switch. It just basically upscales the image to 1080p on your screen so you can enjoy it at that higher resolution. Basically, it allows the system to overclock itself or clock itself fully because that's when battery life has no effect on it because it's directly plugged in right there at your home. So then again, we come to the part saying, well, gee, this sounds like an extremely limited system as far as graphically is concerned. And I would tend to agree if this is all Nintendo does with the Switch. However, there's one big important piece of information that many people are downplaying right now and that is the USB-C port connection of the switch. This would allow for connecting various different devices including external power sources. We've talked about before how Thunderbolt uses a USB-C type of connection to allow for external GPU support on Nvidia and AMD graphics cards. And it could be used to be connected to virtual reality as well, as we talked about in our other video the other day. So there's a lot of potential there for the Switch to have multiple different types of devices connected to it, different power supplies, different power sources, different GPUs, even different CPUs, <laughs> maybe, we never know. But the type of things they could connect to this system is basically unlimited. So theoretically, Nintendo could later on release an add-on GPU for the Nintendo Switch that you could plug into that USB-C port and it could be as powerful as you want it to be. It could be a GTX 1080 for all we know or it could be whatever Nintendo wants it to be. Now the question is, well, when you detach the Switch to play on portable mode, there's no way you could play a game that was meant for a GTX 1080 
on your portable device when you disconnect it instantaneously. It's impossible, right? The switch is not powerful enough to do that. And that is 100% correct. There's no way that could be the case. Even if developers somehow programmed two profiles per game to be downscaled that far down from a GTX 1080, for example, of course we're going to do the biggest example possible to make this clear, but if they downscaled it from a GTX 1080 all the way down to a Tegra X1, which is several, several times less powerful than a GTX 1080, there's no way a developer would do that because they would basically have to program two separate games and put a lot of extra time and effort into making those games look the best they can on each tier GPU, basically. Even if they run the same API, a lot of extra work would need to be done to get the game looking good in the portable aspect of it. So what is the solution Nintendo could use that would still make it appear like you're using the Switch in its instantaneous portable mode? Well the answer in that case is pretty simple. Nvidia has the grid streaming service that they use to stream games to the Nvidia Shield tablet. And these are PC quality games, PlayStation 4 level type graphics that they are able to stream to the Nvidia Shield tablet through the grid. Now of course this is a paid service but Nintendo could definitely do something like this with the Nintendo Switch on certain games. Say they have an online service where it's similar to PSN where you have to pay a yearly subscription fee of $60 a year for example. But included in this subscription fee you have online play, you have matchmaking, you have voice chat, you have party chat, you got your discounts here and there, whatever, for the eShop. But you also have an option of using streaming for the high-end games. So theoretically, Nintendo could make it possible so third parties could port PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox Scorpio games over to the Nintendo Switch that could be compatible with an external GPU that would be replacing the original dock that came with the Nintendo Switch and making it as powerful as the other systems. And then when you detach the switch from the dock, then for that particular game it'll automatically switch to streaming mode and stream the game to the tablet instead of having the actual tablet try to process it, which would be nearly impossible for that system to do all by itself without an extreme amount of work by the developer to program two separate profiles. And then you have games of course that are designed to use the Switch's power at home and on the go. Games are not as demanding, perhaps 3D fighters for example, or racing games, or 2D side-scrolling games, and probably most indie games as well. Things like that, that are not going to be extremely high-budget AAA games, like the next Tomb Raider for example, or the next Crisis game, or something really advanced that there's no way that the tablet itself could run with its own power, it's just simply not powerful enough. The Maxwell Tegra X1, if that is true, is definitely not powerful enough to run those games at full settings. There would need to be another option for third parties to run higher spec games without having to be worried about the tablet being the only source of power. And that is how they could do that, by offering options to developers to have games be made for the home console variant of it when it's at home and being able to stream it to the Switch itself when you're away from home. That would be a really smart way Nintendo could do that because then they're utilizing all the features of the Switch with the USB-C port, the dock being able to be switched, <laughs> quote unquote, with an external GPU that is as powerful basically as Nintendo wants it to be and still using the portable aspect of it instantaneously when you take it out of the dock. Nintendo could theoretically accomplish all these things with the Nintendo Switch with a little bit of creativity. So will they do that? That remains to be seen. But the proof will be in the developers and what they start saying about the system after it releases. If they start complaining about the power of it and saying that they can't really do what they want to do with the Nintendo Switch, then you might see Nintendo make an announcement where they have an external GPU or something that could make it easier for developers to put their games on the system if that in fact is a problem. Of course we're just speculating, we're talking about this rumored information on the GPU of the Switch being Maxwell. So that all remains to be seen. But keep in mind that if developers are happy with the Switch, they're going to release their games on the system. They will find a way, just like they did with the Wii. They found a way to release their games on the Wii, and the Wii was a huge success. So we have to wait and see exactly what Nintendo's strategy is for this system as far as options for third parties, but in the way that the Switch is designed, the potential is there for them to have it be successful for both as a portable system and as a home console if they provide the options that are actually possible 
to be compatible with how the switch is designed. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I really like to hear your opinions on the matter and discuss it with you further. And look forward to the Seasons of Heaven trailer coming Monday and we'll see the full trailer of that game be revealed. So we're looking forward to that and seeing how that game looks. And as usual, the latest in all things Nintendo, right? So we have a lot to look forward to. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and comment, and I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Take care.